I me? first want to give our viewers a taste of what you guys do because you, your particular part of Hill House is sure. a relatively new sure. unit. How long have you guys well existed, for the lack of a better sure. word? Sure. So Hill House started this as a dedicated strategy about nine months, ten months ago with hiring me. Uh, and the reason for that were twofold. One, it was a desire for the firm to actually serve its entrepreneurs across the capital structure. Okay. So we've historically done public equity, private equity, growth and venture, as you know. We started real estate uh, three years ago. The idea was also that there could be solutions relevant to our entrepreneurs in the slightly safer end of the capital structure, okay. which is why LM Credit evolved, uh, which means inspiration, by the way. Mm. Uh, so hopefully it's an inspired decision. And I think secondly also we felt that there was a clear white space for Asian grown private credit managers uh, that have an Asian dedicated pool of capital to manage. So those are the two reasons we started this venture about 10 months ago. Right. Does it feel crowded? New, ent well, new entrants like yourself. Sure. I wouldn't consider you guys new entrants. You've been in the industry for a lot of many years, but we, we have seen a lot of money get thrown into this in, in, in this direction. For sure. I think there'd be pockets of any strategy that'll always be crowded. So if I see Australia lending against private equity sponsors, that's a space there's a lot of capital that's available. Mm. Some global funds are able to invest in that too because Australia is a developed market, fits the mandate. If you look at India on some of the smaller transactions, there's been a lot of domestic money that's been raised where they can do tickets of ten to twenty million dollar equivalents. Okay. But as you go slightly larger, then again, there's there's a lot to grow in that space. So I think there are pockets that are crowded. But for us, we've always prided ourselves to be a solutions-driven business. What does that mean? And, and that means solving problems. And, okay. that, and I give an example, right? Solving problems would mean an entrepreneur could come to us saying, this business is doing really well, but I promised my private equity partner, who's a minority stake in IPO, markets are not conducive, could you give me some money to buy them out? And that's really at the shareholder level. Yeah. So that's one end of the spectrum, right? But I'm solving a problem for him where the private equity uh, client of theirs might have needs that their fund life is finishing or they could have other compulsions to exit. The founder doesn't think this is the best time or value for, for him to exit. So we give him money to buy out the private equity sponsor and give him more runway to IPO the business probably in two years down the run. Right. So that's that's one just one approach uh, on, on a solutions-based business. R running the risk of over over generalizing you know is the reason private credit is booming because almost nothing else is and you know there's also a lot of money that sure. that 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 you know that was that was raised as rates were going up so the cost of capital for some of these funds their force their hurdle rates are forcing them up the yield curve for sure uh, and, and i think it's there's a distinction here between asia pacific and the us okay i think in the us this is the mature market uh, Europe is probably five years behind the U.S., mm -hmm. give or take, and Asia is still a, a, is a virgin landscape, yeah. right? Just to give you perspective, you've got almost 40% of GDP coming from a, from the region, 30% of private equity, uh, dry powder, and less than 10% of private credit. So I think there's, again, space to grow. Historically, there have been reasons why bank lending has dominated, and some of that has changed. Right. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that. but. But yeah, I think there's there's been a lot of capital that's been raised predominantly in the U.S. on a very focused strategy, which is more LBO financing. I think in Asia, the capital that's been raised is, as I said, is more driven by either certain specific markets like Australia and India, and there are fewer pan-Asia players. Okay, India's been a very a hot spot for you guys. What what are you guys busy with there? And what are you looking at? Sure. So we've actually closed a couple of transactions in India. Again, for confidentiality reasons, I can't talk about no, it. Go ahead, no worries. Your reporters do a great job, actually, in, 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 in still figuring it out. Okay. But, uh, uh, so credit to them. Yeah. But, but I think, again, India, given the need for capital, um, I think we're seeing a lot of transactions. Uh, we've hired one senior person based in Mumbai just to make sure that we can service our clients on the ground. And the team that we've hired and put in place also has a lot of Indian experience, including myself. So yeah, India is absolutely going to be a key market, as would Australia, okay. uh, over the near term. Are you sector specific or sector agnostic or somewhere in between? Um, I think fairly sector agnostic, but if you take a step back, the Hillel strategy has always been understanding and fundamental value-driven investing. So even if we are trying to do a new sector, the premise of this, even if it's a credit investment and we've got equity cushion behind us, would really be driven by what comfort can we derive, what value can we create, how much research can we do around the sector and its nuances. And in terms of where we are in the we were talking during the break 
where do you think we are in the cycle and running the risk of over simplifying sure. the rest of the region and also the types of people that you look for because for some this is they they haven't been in half a cycle for sure for sure and that is extremely important maybe let's start with that first i think that i take actually immense pride in the team that we've built we've hired eight people externally in and we obviously get a lot of support from the hill house platform itself on, okay. on a lot of related functions but the people that i chose to hire had one of two characteristics probably both one they've seen cycles so these are people senior people who've in, been investing 15 20 years as of i uh, in this space and that's a rare talent uh, for a variety of reasons but also i think these are people who are somewhat multifaceted so they can look at multiple geographies multiple sectors which gives us the ability to find relative value so i'm not forced to invest in australia if australia gets suddenly very tight there's a lot of capital chasing it i can switch pivot to australia or i could pivot to india i could pivot to southeast asia so the ability of my team to be able to do that is extremely important for me okay so india australia we've established that as a core part of your asia strategy are you looking to enter other markets we are so i think given our strength of the platform china is always going to be important i think there's clearly some demand supply dynamics because of which the need for capital has reduced in china. offshore capital has reduced in china mm. china is one of the only countries where rates have actually fallen so a lot of financing has moved on short that would change as dollar rates come back uh, come down back so i think they again china china is always going to be extremely relevant for us and particularly okay. more so with the kind of opportunity set that we see and there's less people actively looking at the strategy it does create again relative value for what, us why do you think there's less attention I, I, right now to china is it is it the premium is it an understanding of the market is it all of the above i i think it's a bit of everything okay. i think it's it's about understanding the market it's about going deep it's about understanding what's your competitive positioning of particular sectors is and that's hard if you don't have people on the ground and again i think like with the credit strategy we've got people on the ground in beijing we've got people in uh, sydney in mumbai that talked about i think having that having that connectivity with what's happening on the ground is extremely important when you're investing in this space because unlike private equity here your returns are capped at best you'll get your money back plus interest yeah and at at the at all things go to plan if all things go to plan at and the downside case you could lose a lot of money so i think having that onshore connectivity having that connect people on the ground who can evaluate risk and follow up uh, post closing the deal is extremely important 